Hey everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another Construct 2 tutorial. We're doing Super Mario Bros. We're up to video 12 and we are going to start doing the level graphics finally. First thing, go down to the description of the video. There is a level.zip file that you will need to download. And then what we're going to do is we're going to open them up, drag the folder into your graphics, and we are good to go. Now in this folder there is only a single file, but it contains all the graphics that we're going to need. If you've never seen these kind of files before, these are known as tile maps. If you know these and you've used them in Construct before, most of this video is going to be irrelevant to you. So the first thing is going to be setting up our tile maps. The second thing is just using them. So if you know how to use them, watch the first half of the video and you can stop watching maybe about halfway after we set them all up. So in our game, the first thing that we are going to have to do is create a new folder for our tile maps. So I'm going to right click on object types, add a subfolder, call it tiles, and we are ready to go. Now the reason that we create this tile maps folder, or tiles I should say, is we're going to have multiple of them, not just one. Because we're going to have a background, we're going to have a level, and we're going to have an overlay. When we get to creating them, then I'll explain the purpose of them. But let's create it to start with. Right click on tiles, insert a new object, do not select sprite, select tile map, and give the first one the name background. And I'm just going to click here. And you'll notice, first of all, it's got a built-in tile map image. Now, we obviously don't want to use this. We want to use the one I've just given you. So let's click the open folder or the load an image from a file button. Select your tiles picture. And we are ready to go. So close that. You'll notice that it's automatically generated a tile map, which is the size of the layout. So if you change the layout size now, you're going to have to adjust all your tile map sizes. Okay, but before we do, we actually have a few settings to change on this bad boy. Okay, because the default settings aren't enough. So first step, the layer needs to change. This guy's a background because he's got to display underneath the level, the Mario, the items, and everything else. The second thing is we need to change the position and the size. Now the reason we need to do that is because currently this tile map is exactly the height of our layout. We actually need it to appear a little bit above and a little bit below. All right, if you've ever played the original Mario, you'll see that there's like blocks and then you see sort of a half a block on the bottom of the level. And that's what we're going to set up right now. The first thing we need to change, the Y value needs to be minus 8. And you can see that pushes it up half a tile. And the size, we're going to increase to 240. And that pushes it halfway down as well. Now, with that done, the only last thing we need to do is change the tile width to 16 and the tile height to 16. And we're ready to go. But before I go through how to use a tile map, we have two more that we're going to be using. And I'm going to create them first. Now, we can't just drag on two more backgrounds and then use them with different properties because unfortunately they're going to behave a little bit differently and they're going to be different layers and etc. But they're going to have the same values for everything we just changed here. So what I want to do is I'm going to right click on background and I'm going to clone him. And I'm going to call this one level. I'm going to do that again and I'm going to call this one overlay. And then we're going to add them and we'll set them up and I'll quickly explain them after. So position is minus 8 on the Y, size, the height is 240, tile width is 16, tile height is 16, same thing with over, oh, just make sure he's on the right layer as well. I always forget that one. So level, layer, drag in the overlay, I need to change him first or I'll forget to overlay. So he's on top of every object including Mario, position, minus 8 on the Y, size, height is 240, Tile width 16, tile height 16. All right, all of them are done. Now, before we actually go into the description, I'm just going to do a few things because right now, if I just click on my level, I'm selecting the overlay. If I wanted to work with, let's say, the background, then the overlay is going to get in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to my layers on the side and I'm going to disable the visibility of a couple of them. And that way, I can't just accidentally click on them. So I'm going to get rid of HUD, overlay, Mario, bye-bye Mario. Um, and then the rest, items and enemies, why not? And I just noticed these guys aren't on the right layers, so I might fix that up now. Let's just go fake mushroom, you should be in items. Goomba, you should be in enemies. Coin, you should be in items. You should be in items. These guys, hopefully they're in layer blocks. If not, they are now. Same with these guys, layer blocks. Okay, now because we're about to do the actual level, Lay oh, tile map. I'm just going to do the level one first because it's simple and then we'll do the background one in a second. 
What I want to do is I'm going to get rid of all this crappy ground stuff that we've used in the past. And now I'm not just going to delete it from the layout. I'm actually going to delete it from the project. All right. So that way it all goes away straight away. So right click on ground, delete him. Yep. And we have a clean slate to start with. Now, the way tile maps work, I'm just going to click on this little tile map tab down the bottom right. If you don't have this little window, then you need to go to view and you need to tick tile map bar. And the way they work is they basically, you've set the size. We've said that the tile map width and height is 16. So every 16 pixels across and 16 pixels down is a tile that we can draw to our tile map. So for example, if I click on, you can see I've got a number of tools. I should explain them first. We have the pointer, which allows us to select objects in our level, okay, and different things. We have the pencil, which allows us to draw the graphics you see in our tile map. We have the rectangle tile tool, which allows us to draw large sections of the same tile, and I'll explain what I mean by that. And then you have the eraser tool. I'm not going to go into the rest of them just yet. We will, though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pencil tool to start with, and I just want to select a single tile that I want to draw. And I can draw this tile, as you can see, anywhere upon the level. Now, you can see why I did the overlay, because right down the bottom, I can do sort of a half tile, and above that, I can do a full tile. So if you just single click, it draws your tile there. Okay, I can single click again and again and again and again and again or I can click and hold it and draw as much of this as I want. Now this is actually going to be the entire bottom of the level for quite some time so I'm just going to draw a bit of it and if I wanted to speed up my process I could actually use the rectangle tool and the way this works a little bit differently is you just click and drag and it draws as it says a rectangle. Okay. And you can see that we've got all this nice brick stuff here. Now, unfortunately, right now, this is just graphics. I'm going to turn Mario's layer back on so you can see him. So there's no solid aspects of this ground. So if I was to press play right now, okay, grab my tab. Mario's fallen through the world. So what I'm going to do is I am going to simply create a solid behavior on the level tile map. Behaviors, add, solid, if I press play now, drag my tab over, and there we go. We've actually got a pretty decent looking Mario level, and we can't go through the back of it either. Wow, that's actually pretty long. But anyway, as you can see, because we've added the solid behavior, all right, it's meant that each one of the blocks that we make on this level layout now is going to have collision, and that's why we have a separate level and background tile map because anything we put in the background we don't want Mario to collide with it but everything we put in the level we want Mario to collide with it okay so that's pretty much the beginnings of it now if you want to actually have a look at the collision of these tiles because not every tile is the same you can actually double click on a tile and you can see the collision model there okay and you can double click on any of them and you actually have the opportunity to change that a little bit if you wanted to. Now, by default, leave it as it is because you're not going to need to use anything else. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go now to the background layer, or tile map, I should say. And I'm going to start drawing some background stuff. So some clouds, some grass, some mountains. So I'm first of all going to use these bad boys. I'm probably not going to be exactly the same as the original Mario, but you can do it if you want to. Da, 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 da. Just use all the pieces. The background's not going to have any collision, so it doesn't matter. And it's going to display in the background just nicely like this. I think this is roughly what the original looked like, because I was recreating it the other day, and I think I've got a little bit of a hand on it. Okay. And what I, you can also do, I didn't mention this yet, but you can actually right-click and select multiple tiles, just like so. So you can see my selection has just highlighted a chunk there, and I can actually draw multiple pieces like so. And the rectangle tool will actually allow you to draw multiple pieces of what you've got. So it's actually quite interesting how that works. I like it. But yeah, so you can keep going along the level and you can start adding in some mountains, some short ones, some big ones, some large ones. You can either recreate the original one or you can just stick with, you know, whatever you want to create. The clouds, do 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 Okay, right here. Yep. Are they? That's not the best cloud in the world. There's the proper clouds. I'm an idiot. There we go. If you don't like what you've got, you can erase it. Okay? If you want to 
draw one piece at a time, you select each one, or you use the rectangle tool and create multiple like that. Whoops, didn't mean to double click there. So, go nuts with this, people. I don't want to spend an entire video sitting down and explaining to you how you draw clouds or how you where you should draw a mountain. I want you to go back, experience the original game, and try and figure out what you actually like it to look like. Okay, if you want a pipe, you simply whoop. The pipe should go on the level because it needs collision. So I'm going to select that one. I'm just going to draw a regular pipe. And I can draw a longer pipe. It doesn't work like that. And I can draw an even longer pipe. Like so. Okay, and you can just keep going with that methodology. Okay, if you want a floating platform, you simply need anything from the level layout and put it in your level, just like so. And you have got yourself a nice looking original Mario game. Okay, so you might ask me, this doesn't quite look like the original because there's no item blocks and there's no destructible blocks. Well, what you do is we'll simply turn, whoop, we'll simply grab one of our blocks down the bottom here. So like a breakable block. I'm just going to drag him up here like this. And the original had an item block. I'm just going to turn my grid on for a sec because I want everything aligned nicely okay yep that's better it was item block breakable block item block breakable block item block and then we had an item block and you can just start adding some goombas in as well so let's turn our enemies back on put mr goomba there because there's always one at the start and then there's a couple over here all right and you can just keep going like that you can even add in a if, we do, uh, if you want to, you could grab your Koopa Trooper, copy him over here, and seriously, we've got ourselves a nice looking level. We could add in a nice background here, so we could go, whoop, I need my pencil for this. We could make it a big mountain for this time. Do, 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 and like that. And as I said, I don't want to spend forever on this. Yeah, I was just filling the gaps like so. Put a top on him. And look, we could just I could spend hours showing you how to draw some Mario stuff, but whoop, that's not the right tool. But I want you to do it yourself. I want you to go and I want you to experience it. I want you to draw your own levels. Because we're at that point where everything's pretty good. Now the only thing I have not explained just yet is the overlay. Now the overlay doesn't have the solid behavior to it, and I need to turn the overlay layer back on so this works properly. What the overlay is, is because when Mario goes, let's say for instance, the pipe is probably the first thing. When Mario goes down a pipe, okay, he goes behind the pipe. Now, unfortunately, if you have a look at our layers, first of all, the level layer is lower than Mario. Okay, so there's no way for me to display that pipe on top of Mario without having another tile map on top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually draw another pipe on the overlay. I know that sounds really tedious and it's hard to see because we're drawing over the top of an existing pipe, but if you want to, you can always turn off the level layer and draw your pipes this way. Okay, so everything that appears on the overlay layer is going to be displayed in front of Mario. Okay, and the pipes we need to do that for because in the next video, we're actually going to attack the pipes and how you move Mario around different areas and he goes down pipes, etc, etc. Okay, I'll turn these back on, otherwise it's pretty bland. And Mario. And if we play our game, everything looks pretty darn good. It looks like a pretty original Mario game. Okay, if I can make this jump. Hee <laughs> hee Okay, and so forth. So, I hope you enjoy this video. Before we go, actually, I should probably show you the rotation of these tiles. So, you'll see we've got these buttons over here. We've got flip, we've got flip, and you've got rotate, and you've got rotate. Sometimes, you might have pipes that pop out from the roof. So, let's go to the level layer, and let's rotate some pipage. And you can see, just with those selected and pressing the rotate button, it's rotated the pipe around. So, I could create a pipe that sticks out of the roof like that. Okay, and I could also have one at the beginning of the level if I wanted. I could rotate it again. Pop, pop. Okay, highlight the top. Okay, is that the right way around? No, it's not. 
I've just got to rotate it again and redraw these bits. But yeah, that's how you use the rotation part. It's pretty easy to do, really, if you ask me. But it's up to you now to go nuts, add in your own levels, and design your Mario game from scratch. If you want to reproduce the other one, I'm going to try and reproduce the original level a bit. I'm not going to do a whole lot of it, because it'll take me forever if I do. But that's it for today, everybody. I hope you liked the video. Can you like, subscribe, and comment down the bottom, because i love to hear from you. But that's Dingle signing off, and I'll see you in the next video, everybody, where we'll get these pipes working. See you for now.